Alright. Good afternoon. Fishing day. Sorting out all the fishing stuff. Cleaning up mess from last weekend from going fishing. We went down a very dusty road. All my reels are covered in dust. So I got my real magic spray over there. And I don't know, I gotta go through this too. I got that all mixed up. Went over backwards and now I gotta sort it back out. Got down here about past Port Scotch. Very popular in South America in the Southern Hemisphere. I think even in Central America in the hotter countries along the equator latitudes, tropics. Uh, sells Brazil, I think it's like the number one if I remember correctly, that's like the number one market for this. I could be wrong. I even think they ship scotch down there and it's, they bottle it down there. Uh, we'll try it today. It's 40% alcohol by volume. It is a product of Scotland. It is a blended scotch whiskey. 80 proof. I can smell the grain coming off of it just right here. Just right here. I've already poured a drink. I'm letting it kind of melt for you guys because we want to talk about that. This is going to be rather quick. This is a simplistic review. It is a light, light amber, borderline darker gold. Green apples, sour, sour hay, very sour malty hay. It's not very strong in the malty. It's more grain than that. Slight cedar note. There's a human component in the nose. Palette. Forgive the train. I ain't got no control over that. I think the train is done now. Uh, back to the palate. Sour green apples. Moldy green hay. Slightly cedar. Not slightly. There is a cedar note. It's the grain whiskey coming out. Very youthful. I doubt there's much in this over three years old. There might be older, but not on the malt side. Cumin, black pepper. Short finish, it's done. I don't know what else to say about it. It's made for tropical environments. It's made for this right here. I've done poured one ounce. I'm trying to get this done before it melts on us. But the train kind of interfered a little bit. Uh, it's got one ounce of, uh, one, I'm sorry, one and a half ounces of passport scotch in it and the balance of the LaCroix. The ice has melted. You can see where the line was up to there. The ice has melted some, some and it's kind of uh, dropped down a little bit. This is tangerine sparkling water. I've did this before, so I know what I'm getting. It's just sparkling water and passport. All it is. Tangerine and the minerality of the sparkling water balance out the sourness. It's very good like this. I can see why this sells in the tropics. Because this is very refreshing, honestly. This really is. It's, surprisingly, it's, it works very well in this capacity. This capacity does not. This capacity, it's a 70. It's just a 70 score. It's just not. And it's a C minus. 
not quite failing in the D zone. But it's definitely something I won't drink again. I'll, I'll never buy another bottle unless it's to mix. And I'm not a big mixer, so this bottle will be, when all this is done, it'll be done. But anyway, did this for you guys, so y'all can know if you see that bottle of Passport Scotch in there, and you kind of wonder, that's a blended Scotch, just how bad can it be? I'm not going to say it's bad, bad. I'm going to say you have better choices. But if you want a mixer, a cheap mixer, this will do you a lot better as a cheap mixer with sparkling water than if you was to buy an inexpensive single malt. You're better off to buy this. Work better. Value for money, this is where it shines. I'll leave it at that. Remember the spirit in your glass ain't running from you. Take your time, sip and enjoy it. You'll be better for it as will we all. I finally got it out. I'll talk to y'all later.